Hello everybody, this is Brian Garvin from Oceanside, California, and today's video is going to be on the 11 reasons why the SPOT Ethereum ETF should get approved by May of 2024. Um, this is a big issue going on because it's the Bitcoin SPOT ETF got approved on January 8th, so this is going to be May, about four months later, and, and um, basically BlackRock and Fidelity have their applications in for it. And I'm going to give you 11 reasons why I feel it'll be approved in May. And, they, and when you're done watching this video, I think you're going to breathe a lot easier knowing that this is actually going to happen. It's not just fantasy and it's not something the SEC has a ton of power over and they're going to be able to stop. So I think you're going to like this video. Um, first, let me address that. Um, this is just my standard disclaimer. This is not financial or legal advice. Um, this is for educational and informational purposes only. And um, I'm just speculating about what could be happening based on the research I've done so far. Okay, so eventually I, I wanted, I'm going to do a complete video on ETH. And it's going to take me a couple days to research, but it's going to be about the coin and where I feel it'll be going by 2030. And I think you're really, really going to want to watch that video because it's going to be, it could change your life, you know. Um, it's just it's another play just like chain link that I did earlier that you know you put a few grand in and, and, and I believe the coin will 100x by 2030 but that's just my initial speculation but I'm going to give you all the details in a different video this, this video just covers the legal reasons why I feel the Ethereum ETF will get approved um, so here we go okay before all the before we speculate uh, whether the a spot ETF application uh, will or won't get approved. Um, let's consider a few things. Paul Gruel is the chief legal officer at Coinbase. Okay, he he was also vice president at Facebook and former U.S. magistrate judge for the U.S. District Court for the Northern District of California. So, basically, he's a man who's um, who knows exactly what he's talking about, and he spent decades in the system. And um, I'm, I'm kind of paraphrasing his points on why the ET spot, Ethereum spot ETF will get approved. Um, he's worked in the system for a very long time, decades. So he, he knows exactly what's going on in the space. Um, way more than I do, let's put it that way. So now I'm going to go over the 10, actually it's 11 reasons why I believe the BlackRock spot ETF will get approved on May 23rd, 2024. That's when the court case is going to go down. Um, and, and if it doesn't get approved by, by this exact date, um, it will get approved soon after this. In other words, what could happen, I'm speculating here, you know, but, but what could happen is they can go to, they can go to this hearing on, on, uh, what is it? May 23rd. Okay. And the court might say, okay, you guys got a good case, but w you need to buy the Ethereum first and, and offer you know, and, and basically all up front and then offer it to them as a cash distribution as part of their ETF or, so, I mean, I'm kind of going in the weeds a little bit here. Um, you don't have to know all this stuff, but it's just, they might make a decision like that. Um, and, and then they, they, they might say, let's go to, you know, another hearing in three weeks. And when you guys got all this figured out, we'll launch it. You know, BlackRock has been doing this kind of stuff for decades. I mean, with different uh, you know stuff they know they know the space into the legal landscape they can set something like this up in a few days I mean they're they're that's how how good they are um, same with fidelity I'm sure they can do the same thing so I'm gonna go over these reasons um, the SEC might work with companies and ask them to change this or that and eventually give their approval like I just said before okay so here's I'm gonna go I'm gonna start the 11 reasons right now reason number one um, he, he meant uh, he mentioned millions of Americans own ETH, and it has been vital to the crypto ecosystem since its 2015 launch. And ETH is a commodity, not a security. Um, I, th I think he's talking about Gary Gensler. But I, uh, so number two, the SEC, actually on number one, I, I, I believe, uh, when I said he, I meant to say the SEC, has mentioned millions of Americans held ETH and it has been vital to the crypto ecosystem since its 2015 launch and ETH is a commodity, not a security. So the SEC has been saying this for years and what is it now, 2024? So they've been saying this for nine years already. So 
when G Gary Gensler shows up in court, he's going to have to explain that, and he's not going to be able to. Okay, so number two is the SEC has accused certain uh, commodity tokens, such as ETH, as being security tokens for years. This is old hat news. This is nothing new. I mean, this is what crypto has been fighting for for the entire time, and it's just... It's just like intimidation, you know. The government, they're 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 showing themselves a little bit. They're showing they're they're trying to flex their muscles a little bit, and they're just showing off. But at the end, um, the evidence is gonna go against them. That's like you're gonna find out when I mention the next nine things. Number three, other senior SEC officials has said that Ethereum is not a security. See what we want. What we want to come out in court is the court to establish that Ethereum is not a security. That's what we want. If it's a security, then it's a problem. Um, you you can view the director of corporations finance, uh, Bill Hinman, statement on this on his Twitter account, and he he documents all this on his Twitter account. This is documented evidence we're talking about here. This is speculation. Um, he will have all the accompanying documents and references. On, on his account, um, on his Twitter account, which is now called X, because Elon Musk bought it out a while back. Um, number four, before Gary Gensler was the chair of the SEC, he testified before Congress and, and said himself that Ethereum is not a security. And th this is his actual testimony before Congress. You don't think that Larry Fink's lawyers are, are going to create a video of that and show that as an exhibit in court if they have to. Of course, they're totally prepared for this. Um, they're ready for this. So his testimony is available on the congress.gov site. So so his testimony about what I just told you is documented on congress.gov. Um, number five, not too long ago, the SEC trial lawyers continue um, to compare Ethereum to Bitcoin. Okay. Um, so... Bitcoin has already been cleared. I mean, it, there's already spot ETFs out. So, and if they're comparing it to Ethereum, then we're good. I mean, it's the same thing. And, and technically speaking, see, I'm not gonna, this video isn't about other cryptos, this is just Ethereum, but I'm, uh, anyways, I, I'll hold off on that for a different video. So number six, um, the CFTC, which stands for Commodities Future Commodities Futures Trading Commission, CFTC, um, and federal courts have consistently confirmed that Ethereum is a commodity and not a security. So that's, a, that, that's, the, a organi that's an organization that matters. Um, and wait till you hear my next point of discussion here. N number seven, Ethereum futures contracts started trading on CFTC regulated futures exchanges in 2021. So Ethereum's already been on has already been trading on uh, CFTC regulated futures exchanges since 2020. So that's all, that's almost three years from the time I'm making this video right now in 2024. Um, because of this, Gary Gensler um, doesn't have a leg to stand on in court. Um, and this is, you know, I'm just saying this in my humble opinion. Um, once again, I'm not saying any facts. And that's just my opinion that he doesn't have a leg to stand. He's going to come to court. And, and, and Larry Fink... So lawyers is going to bring all this stuff up and, and coinbase lawyers are going, probably going to be there too because this is an important issue to them um and, and i'm sure they're going to delegate a lawyer to, to to go down there as well i can't i don't know that for sure i haven't really um you know researched that or, or found out for sure that they're going to be there but why wouldn't they be there i mean that's just this is a super important issue and i'm sure coinbase wants it as a security as well so <clears throat> Now, number eight, um, there's something called the Howey test, okay? And the Howey test determines if, uh, well, what it, it doesn't determine uh, e-status. Uh, so that's a good thing, not a bad thing. Um, digital assets like Ethereum do not involve an ongoing contractual obligation related to a business enterprise and are not investment contracts, aka securities. So what they're saying here is the how if, you don't want to pass the Howey test because if you do pass the Howey test, it's considered a security. And, and ETF, uh, Ethereum fails miserably on all points of the Howey test. And I'm going to go over that in a little bit just so you kind of know what's going on. The Howey test is a legal framework used in the United States to determine if a transaction qualifies as an investment contract under securities regulations. 
um, there's there's no contract associated with any crypto because you're not required to hold it for any particular length of time. So it, it's not like a, a mutual fund where you if you you're going to get a 10% withdrawal fee if you take it out soon. I mean, a crypto is you can buy or sell when you want. It's complete freedom, um, complete marketplace freedom. So and that's what we're all shooting for, right? Complete freedom to buy and sell when you want, stake, hold for 20 years, whatever you want to do. Um, number nine, even if the Howey tests were applied, like I said before, ETH would uh, fail this test. I want to make it clear that for, for the purposes of going to court, you want to fail the money Howey test, like I said before. Um, because, because ETH didn't pass this test, the SEC might have a leg to stand on, um, but they don't because it doesn't fail the test. I mean, it fails the test. If it didn't fail the test, then they would have a leg to stand on, but they don't. Uh, number 10, the SEC has no good reason to deny uh, the Ethereum ETF um, exchange products application. The only thing the SEC can do at this point is to try to challenge the long established regulatory status of ETH, which the SEC has um, endorsed many times in the past. So, so the SEC has endorsed Ethereum as a commodity many times in the past. This isn't just something that um, just happened once, you know, because they slipped or something somewhere. Um, this, the, I mean, this is pretty solid stuff I'm telling you here. Um, by challenging this, they're basically being hypocrites and I'm pretty sure the court will see through this. So if they decide to challenge this, they're challenging what they said many times in the past and the court's gonna say, what are you talking about? You approved it, you know, you know, dozens of times in the past in different statements and stuff that, that I'm sure that um, BlackRock's lawyers have like every little, you know, place they said this and they said this on this date, they said this on that date, they have all that. They know this a lot more than I do. Um, so the American capital market and U.S. citizens deserve better than this. They, they, the SEC needs to chill out and just, you know, say, okay, it, it's, it, it's a commodity, not a security. We're cool with that. And one thing I want to say about the Howey test that I skipped a little earlier was um, there, well, oh, no, 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 I was looking for something else, but uh, it didn't come up. I was, was going to mention the different factors of the Howey test, but I forgot to write it down, but that's okay. We don't need to go over that because we know it doesn't pass. Um, so number 11, keep in mind that there's a cur current lawsuit against the uh, cryptocurrency exchange KuCoin. I'm sure you've heard about that. Um, I think it has to do with um, breaking anti-money laundering laws and, and, and that sort of stuff. Um, so if, if you plan on setting an account up at KuCoin, I wouldn't do it. Um, during this, the CFTC also called e Ethereum a commodity during the initial proceedings. So in this case, the CFTC called it a commodity and they didn't call it a security. So, you know, I'm sure their lawyers are going to have that evidence as well. Um, I wanted to clear up these things because I'm going to recommend Ethereum and I'm going to tell you why I'm taking a pretty darn large stake in it and I'm going to tell you how much and why um, but this way you you can sleep a little better at night when I create the next video about why Ethereum is such a valuable asset and why you need to own some or I I can't recommend what you do or don't do but that's what I'm going to do um, so I think personally this is my opinion that if you owned a decent amount of Ethereum let me just say it this way it's not going to hurt your financial position one bit um, BlackRock has some of the best lawyers that are already privy to these facts, like I mentioned before. They have a mark now. Um, Ethereum, I believe, has a market cap of 124 billion. Oh no, no, no! BlackRock has a market cap of 124 billion. And what uh, Larry Fink wants, uh, they usually he usually gets. I mean, he's the uh, he's the CEO of BlackRock. Um, and um, so that's that's how. Uh, that, that, that's how I think this is going to play out with the spot Bitcoin, um, I'm sorry, the spot Ethereum ETF application that's coming in late May. And um, I feel that it'll get approved just like the Bitcoin ETF got approved on January 8th. And if it doesn't get approved on that exact day, I wouldn't stress too much. They'll still be communicating back and forth with the court and everything and it'll all get hashed out. Um, so if you like this type of content, if you think it's benefiting and educating you, uh, please subscribe to my channel. Um, the, then click the notification bell. So YouTube will automatically alert you when I come out with a new video. 
Um, and finally, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. They always generate an interesting dialogue. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll be in touch soon with my next video. Have a great day.